Chapter two, Henry and the Garbage. Two weeks before school started, Henry Huggins was in the kitchen one evening feeding Ribsy, while Mr. Huggins washed the dinner dishes and Mrs. Huggins wiped them. Henry took some horse meat and half a can of Woofy's dog food out of the refrigerator. Thump, thump, thump went Ribsy's tail on the floor as he watched Henry. Henry cut up the horse meat and put it on Ribsy's dish. Why don't you chew it? He asked when Ribsy began to gulp down the pieces of meat. Henry spooned the last of the can of Woofy's into the plastic dish with D-O-G printed on it. Ribsy sniffed at the food, then he wagged his tail and looked hopefully at Henry, who knew this meant that Ribsy would eat the dog food only when he was sure he was not going to get any more horse meat. That's all, said Henry. Eat your woofies like a good dog. A woofies dog is a happy dog. See, it says right here on the can. Woof, <clears throat> said Ribsy, and he went to the refrigerator to show that what he really wanted was another piece of horse meat. All right, just one more piece, said Henry, opening the refrigerator door. You've stayed out of trouble for nearly two weeks, so I guess you deserve it. Mrs. Huggins hung up the dish towel. Henry started to put the empty Woofie's can in the step-on garbage can his mother kept under the sink. Mr. Huggins stepped aside to let Henry pull it out. Henry did not have to step on the pedal to raise the lid. The lid was already up because the can was so full of garbage it would not close. Ribsy came over to sniff, just in case someone had thrown away a bone by mistake. Henry carefully balanced the Woofie's can on top of some potato peelings. He was about to push the garbage can back under the sink when his mother spoke. I am tired of taking out the garbage, she announced firmly. Henry and his father looked at each other, then Mr. Huggins said, She, Henry, your mother is tired of taking out the garbage. Henry didn't say anything. He didn't want to get mixed up with garbage. I have taken out the garbage every day for 11 years, said Henry's mother. 11 years, said Mr. Huggins. Think of it. Day in and day out, said Mrs. Huggins and laughed. Year after year, Mr. Huggins went on. Henry did not see why his mother and father thought this was so funny. He, could say he, would, he couldn't say he was tired of taking out the garbage because he had never taken it out. Instead, he said, Well, so long. I'm supposed to go over to Robert's house to work on his electric train. Just a minute, Henry, said his father. It's just as much your garbage as ours. Henry didn't think this was very amusing. Ah, he muttered. He didn't want to have anything to do with smelly old garbage. None of the other kids on Clickitat Street took out garbage. At least not every day. I'll tell you what I'll do, said Mr. Huggins. I'll raise your allowance 15 cents a week if you take out the garbage. You mean take it out every day? Asked Henry in case his father might mean every other day. He eyed the heaped up can. Garbage, ugh. He could understand his mother being tired of it all right. Every day, said Mr. Huggins firmly. Maybe there's something else I could do to earn 15 cents, Henry suggested, hopefully. Something like, like, no, said his father, just garbage. Henry thought his allowance was now 25 cents a week. That plus 10 cents made 35 cents, plus another nickel made 40 cents. He could find lots of uses for the extra money. Most fathers would just say, take out the garbage, without offering to pay for the job. And... There probably were worse things than garbage, although right now Henry couldn't think of what. Besides, if he didn't say yes, his father might tell him he had to take it out anyway. Okay, it's a deal, said Henry without any enthusiasm. He held his nose with one hand and lifted the garbage container out of the step-on can with the other. Oh, it's not all bad. It's not as bad as all that, said Mrs. Huggins cheerfully. It's a nice, fresh garbage. Ribsy followed Henry out the back door, sniffing as he went, and watched Henry lift the lid off the 30-gallon galvanized metal can that was just like the can standing by the back door of every other house on Clickitat Street. 
Henry peered into the can, which was half full of garbage. Ribsy put his paws on the edge of the can and peered in, too. Most of the garbage was wrapped in newspapers, so it was not as bad as Henry had expected. However, some of the juicier garbage had soaked through the paper, and the whole thing was pretty smelly, especially a couple of old tuna fish cans. Henry emptied the container and took it back into the kitchen. Then he and Ribsy went over to Robert's house. That week, Henry took out the garbage every day. His mother never had to remind him more than twice. By the end of the week, the can was full of soggy newspapers, old dog food cans, pea pods, grass clippings, chicken bones, which Ribsy was not allowed to chew, used tea bags and dabs of this and that all blended into a tangled, smelly mess. Henry could not keep from peering into the can to see how awful it all was. Ugh, thought Henry, and he hoped he, would have, he wouldn't have to take out the garbage for 11 years. He wondered how much one of those electric garbage chopper-uppers cost that some people had installed in their sinks. Henry had never thought much about Monday before, but now it was an important day. The day the garbage man emptied the can and hauled away the garbage. Then Henry could start all over with a new set of smells. Monday morning, Robert and Scooter came over to Henry's house to see what they could find to do. Scooter tinkered with the chain of his bicycle. Henry held one end of a rope while Ribsy tugged at the other end. And Robert sat on the front steps and thought. In the distance, Henry could hear the rattle and thump of the garbage cans as the garbage man emptied them. Robert spoke first. There was a girl in my room at school last year who was double jointed. Ah, that's nothing. So am I, boasted Scooter. See how far back I can pull my thumb? I can pull my thumb back farther than that, said Henry, jerking the rope to make the game of tug-of-war more interesting for Ribsy. The rattles and thumps of the garbage can were growing louder, Henry thought, and the garbage man must be almost at his house. Ah, you guys are really double-jointed, said Robert. This girl in my room could bend her fingers backward without even pushing them with her other hand. The garbage truck had stopped between the Huggins's and the Grumby's houses. The boys watched two big men get out of the truck and balance the barrels on their shoulders. One went across the street to pick up the garbage. The other walked up the driveway between Henry's house and the house next door. The boys forgot all about double joints. Gee, I hope I have muscles like that some day, said Robert. Henry did not answer. He noticed that Ribsy had dropped his end of the rope and was looking anxiously toward the back of the house. He heard the thump of the Grumby's garbage can. The man came down the driveway with his barrel full of the Grumby's garbage, emptied it into the truck, and walked up the driveway with the barrel once more. Ribsy watched every move he made. Then Henry heard the man take the lid off the Huggins's can. Ribsy growled deep in his throat. Henry looked at him anxiously. It was the first time he had ever heard him growl anything but a pretend growl. Suddenly, Ribsy flew into a frenzy of barking and tore down the driveway toward the back of the house. Henry was too shocked to move. He sat listening to Ribsy snarl and bark. Ribsy! He couldn't believe it. Not good old Ribsy. Now he really was in trouble. Scooter was the first to move. Boy, is he mad about something, he exclaimed and ran over to the driveway. Then Henry got into action. He started down the driveway, but what he saw made him stop. Ribsy was growling and jumping at the garbage man, who was using his empty barrel to protect himself. Ribsy, wailed Hen Henry, cut that out. Ribsy continued to snarl in advance while the garbage man retreated down the driveway behind his barrel. When Henry tried to grab Ribsy, the garbage man picked up his barrel and ran toward the truck. He threw the barrel onto the garbage up he threw the barrel up onto the garbage in the back of his truck and jumped inside the cab. Ribsy had his front paws on the running board before Henry could grab him by the carl collar. You keep that dog shut up or you keep your garbage, understand? Garbage man glared at Ribsy, who was still growling deep in his throat. But, but he's not really a fierce dog, pro 
protested Henry, while Ribsy strained so hard at his collar that he choked and coughed. Not much he isn't, said the garbage man. You keep him shut up when I'm around, when I come around, see? Yes, sir. Henry knew he couldn't explain that Ribsy wasn't a fierce dog, not after the way he had just behaved. As soon as the garbage man drove on, Ribsy stopped growling. He looked at Henry and wagged his tail as if he expected to be praised for what he had done. Henry was too stunned to say anything for a minute. Then he said crossly, Now look what you've done. You've got us both in trouble. That's what. Henry scowled at his dog. His father had told him he must keep Ribsy out of trouble if he wanted to go salmon fishing. And now, for no reason he could see, Ribsy had attacked the garbage man. And if he had bitten the garbage man, oh, well, Henry could not bring himself to think about it because he knew that biting dogs were sent to the pound. Scooter was careful to stay a few feet away from Ribsy. I wouldn't get too close to him if I were you, he said. He looks pretty ferocious. Henry looked sadly at Ribsy, who rolled over on his back with his four feet in the air to show that he wanted his stomach scratched. See, he isn't a bit ferocious. Henry was anxious to defend his dog, even though he knew he couldn't convince Scooter. You just saw him, didn't you? asked Scooter. But that wasn't like Ribsy, protested Robert. He's a good dog. Henry noticed that even though Robert defended Ribsy, he was careful to stay away from him, too. Oh, I don't know, said Scooter. You never can tell about dogs. Sometimes they get mean. Not my dog, said Henry, trying frantically to think of an explanation for Ribsy's behavior. Maybe, well, maybe he just doesn't like garbage men. That gave him a better idea. <gasps> Say, maybe the garbage man reminds Ribsy of the vet, he said excitedly. Once when Ribsy got foxtails in his ears from running through some tall grass, we had to take him to the vet and have them taken out. The vet had to hurt Ribsy to get the foxtails out of his ears. And for a long time afterward, every time I got a haircut, Ribsy would sit outside the barber shop and bark at the barber because he wore a white coat like the vet. <laughs> I suppose Ribsy thought you went to the barber to have foxtails taken out of your ears, jeered Scooter. Besides, the garbage man doesn't wear a white coat. He wears blue overalls. <sighs> Leave it to old Scooter to spoil an explanation. Yeah, I guess that's right, Henry answered dejectedly. How did he get mixed up in these things anyway? He had been sitting on the front steps, just minding his own business, and now, all of a sudden, he was in trouble. And the worst of it was Scooter had seen the whole thing. Now everyone on Clickitat Street would know about Ribsy. And then Henry realized he had another problem, the garbage. Oh, a whole week's collection was still in the can in the backyard. What was worse, it was going to stay there for seven days until the garbage man came around again. What was he going to do with the garbage he had to take out until then? That evening, Henry put off telling his mother and father what had happened until they were washing dishes and he was cutting up horse meat for Ribsy. They both looked serious. I can't understand it, said Mrs. Huggins. He's always been such a good-natured animal. If he really is getting ferocious, maybe we should keep him tied up. Oh, Mom, no, protested Henry. He hates to be tied up. And anyway, he always chews through the rope. Henry hoped his mother wouldn't mention buying a chain. Why, he wouldn't have any fun with Ribsy chained in the yard, not even riding his bike. It wouldn't be the same without Ribsy riding in the box tied to the back fender or loping along beside him. There must be some reason for his not liking the garbage man, said Mr. Huggins. I wonder if the garbage man ever kicked him. Gee, Dad, do you think so? Henry asked eagerly. Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't do that, said Mrs. Huggins. Henry was anxious to change the subject before anything more was said about tying Ribsy in the backyard. He lifted the container out of the step-on garbage can and started to go out. Then, with a groan, oh, he remembered that the can outside was already full. Cheapers, Mom, what'll I do with the garbage? he asked. You'll just have to manage the best you can. Push it down in the can somehow. 
Mrs. Huggins wiped a cup and sighed, Oh, Henry, I don't know how you get mixed up in things the way you do. Henry emptied the container on top of the garbage in the big can and tried to put the lid on again. He pushed it down as hard as he could, but it would not close. The can was extra full because Mr. Huggins had mowed the lawn again and emptied the grass clippings into it. Oh, you old dog, you. Henry said crossly to Ribsy, who was sniffing the can. It'll be all your fault if I don't get to go fishing. Ribsy sat down and scratched a flea while Henry stared glo gloomily at the garbage can. There was one thing he was sure of. When he grew up and had a boy of his own, he would never, ever ask him to take out the garbage. <sighs> Unfortunately, that week turned out to be unusually warm. Tuesday evening, when Henry and his mother and father were eating dinner, a breeze moved the curtains at the dining room window. Pee you, said Henry, catching a whiff of overripe garbage from the can below. Never mind the sound effects, said Mr. Huggins as he got up from the table to close the window. This made it very warm in the dining room. It was even warmer in the kitchen when Henry's mother and father were washing and wiping dishes. Mrs. Huggins had to put down the dish towels several times to swat flies. Henry fed Ribsy in silence. He dreaded the trip to the garbage can. When he could put it off no longer, he picked up the container and started out, followed closely by Ribsy. This time, he arranged the day's refuse in a handful at a time around the pile. Then he balanced the lid on top. The whole thing looked and smelled terrible. On Wednesday, when Henry walked reluctantly down the back steps with the garbage, he saw Mr. Grumby standing on his back porch. As Henry took the lid off the can, Mr. Grumby looked across the driveway. So, that's where the smell is coming from, he said. I'm afraid it is, Mr. Grumby, answered Henry. I heard about Ribsy tearing the seat out of the garbage man's overalls, said Mr. Grumby. Oh. Jeepers, thought Henry miserably. The story's not only going around the neighborhood, it's getting worse than it really was. Next thing, people would be saying Ribsy bit the garbage man. He explained what had really happened, and then Mr. Grumby went in and closed all the windows that faced the Huggins' house. Henry grew more and more discouraged. On Thursday, after he had piled all the garbage on top of the can and replaced the lid as well as he could, he got an apple box out of the garage, climbed up on it, and stepped carefully on the lid. He stamped his feet a few times to work the garbage down into the can and then jumped up and down. It helped some, but not much. On Friday, Henry suggested to his mother they buy a second garbage can, but she did not think this was a good idea. Then Henry decided to take the garbage out before dinner when the container was not so full. He distributed the milk cartons and carrot tops as well as he could on the heap and was jumping up and down on the lid when Robert and Scooter came up the driveway looking for him. What are you doing up there? Robert demanded with one eye on Ribsy. Look at it, Scooter. Did you ever see so much garbage? P.U. said Scooter, staying on the driveway well away from Ribsy, who was rolling on the grass to scratch his back. Never mind the sound effects, Henry jumped to the ground. It was all right for him to criticize his own garbage, but he didn't want anyone else to do it. Come on, let's go out in front. Yes, let's, agreed Scooter. P. Ew. Henry was about to suggest they all go over to the park. Then he decided he'd better not take a chance on Ribsy's behavior towards strangers. Come on, let's see who can walk the farthest on his hands, he said, to keep Scooter and Robert from talking about his troubles. While the three boys were busy trying to walk across the lawn on their hands, they heard a sudden clatter and crash from the backyard and promptly got on their feet. Sounds like a garbage can to me, said Scooter. Henry, who had known instantly what made the noise, was already on his way around the house with Ribsy at his heels. Scooter and Robert were close behind. Henry found the garbage can tipped on its side. The lid had rolled halfway across the backyard and garbage was strewn all the way from the steps to the cherry tree. In the midst of the litter stood a collie and another big dog. A crust of bread hung from the collie's mouth. The dogs started to run when they saw the boys. Ribsy chased them, while Henry grabbed an old woofie's can and threw it after them. You bit it, he yelled. Then he looked at the mess and groaned, oh, garbage. 
He was sick and tired of it. He kicked at an eggshell and groaned again. It wasn't worth 15 cents a week. It wasn't worth a hundred or a thousand or even a million dollars. Scooter and Robert held their noses. Then Scooter made a gagging noise. <coughs> and Robert copied him. Ah, <coughs> oh, hey, fellas, cut it out. Henry glared at his friends and pulled the can, still half full upright. He looked around and sighed. Well, I guess I better get going, said Scooter. I just remembered. I'm supposed to go to the store for my mother. Oh, me too, said Robert. So long, Henry. Some friends, he thought, and set to work. He was busy scooping up coffee grounds and mildewed pea pods when he heard his father's car turn into the driveway. Mr. Huggins looked around the backyard. Dogs, he asked. That collie. Another big dog down the street, answered Henry. Mr. Huggins did not say anything. He found a shovel in the garage and went to work. Dad, began Henry. The garbage man isn't exactly a neighbor. Does he get, does his complaining about Ribsy mean I don't get to go fishing with you? We'll see what happens Monday before we decide, answered his father. Perhaps we can find out what made him act the way he did. On Saturday, Henry did not take the garbage out at all. When neither his mother nor his father reminded him, he guessed they must be as tired of garbage as he was. Sunday afternoon, Robert and Scooter came over to see if anything new had happened to the garbage or to Ribsy. Ah, oh, fellas, forget it, said Henry. Then he saw Beezus and her little sister Ramona coming down the street. Beezus's real name was Beatrice, but Ramona called her Beezus, and everyone else did too. Hi! Henry was glad to be interrupted. Hello, Henry. Did the garbage man ever take away your garbage? Beezus asked. He'll take it tomorrow, said Henry coldly. The way things got around on Clickitat Street. Ramona, look out, screamed Beezus. She rushed over to her little sister, who had a firm hold on Ribsy's tail and was pulling as hard as she could. He bites, said Beezus. He bit the garbage man. He did not bite the garbage man, yelled Henry. Don't you dare say he did. Ribsy looked around at Ramona. Woof, he said mildly and waited patiently. While Beezus frantically pried Ramona's fingers loose from his tail. He didn't bite when Ramona pulled his tail, did he? Henry asked angrily. No, Beezus looked doubtfully at Ribsy. But somebody told Mother he bit the garbage man. Oh, for Pete's sake. Henry was thoroughly disgusted. This was too much. Of course you know what Ribsy would have done if he had got at the garbage man, observed Scooter. You keep quiet, Henry glared at Scooter. The garbage man must have kicked him or something. Look at him. Does he look the least bit cross? Beezus and the boys looked at Ribsy, who lay on the grass with a patient look on his face. Ramona was sitting on him. When she grabbed his ear, Ribsy looked at Henry as if to say, Get her off of me, won't you? No, he doesn't look a le he doesn't look a bit cross, admitted Beezus, pulling her little sister away. He seems to understand she's little and doesn't know any better. Thinking secretly that Ramona did know better, Henry turned to Scooter. Now are you satisfied? he demanded. Well, Scooter was not easy to satisfy. Henry tried to think of something, anything to change the subject. Say, Scooter, he said, I wish you'd take a look at the horn on my bike. It's been sounding funny lately. Sure, said Scooter eagerly. If there was one thing he enjoyed, it was tinkering with a bicycle. Where is it? In the garage, Henry answered, and they all started down the driveway toward the open garage doors. As Scooter took hold of the handlebars and started to wheel the bicycle out of the garage, Ribsy began to growl deep in his throat. The hair stood up on his neck and he moved toward Scooter. Everyone stared at Ribsy. Scooter hastily dropped the bicycle on the driveway and Ribsy stopped growling at once. He went to Henry and wagged his tail, waiting to be praised. Hey, did you see that? Henry shouted. I sure did, said Scooter. He's a vicious dog. He's not vicious. He was protecting my bike. Henry was growing more excited. He isn't cross at all. He was just protecting my bike. Scooter did not look convinced. Don't you see, Henry went on, that explains.
explains about the garbage man. Ripsy was protecting the garbage from the garbage man because he thought it was mine. He's a watchdog, agreed Beezus. Sure, said Henry eagerly. It takes a smart dog to be a watchdog. At this, Robert and Scooter began to shout with laughter. <laughs> what a watchdog, hooted, hooted Scooter. Who ever heard of a dog guarding the garbage? <laughs> Robert doubled up with laughter. You're valuable garbage, shouted Scooter. <laughs> Precious garbage, howled Robert. Ah, cut it out, said Henry sheepishly. <laughs> and he began to laugh, partly because he thought it was funny, but mostly from relief at proving that Ribsy was not a vicious dog. His fishing trip was still safe. Robert and Scooter whooped and pounded each other on the back. <laughs> Ribsy, sensing that they were laughing at him, hung his head and slunk over to Henry, who hugged him and went on laughing. Boy, oh boy, gasped Scooter. I can just see the Huggins' backyard a year from now when it's ten feet deep. <laughs> and Henry's very own valuable precious garbage, finished Robert. And the boys whooped some more. Henry stopped laughing. The picture of his backyard ten feet deep in garbage was too terrible to think about. Mr. Huggins appeared in the kitchen door. What's this all about? He asked as he joined the group on the driveway. When he heard the story, he laughed, too. He snapped his fingers at Ribsy, and when the dog bounded over to him, he slapped his side and said, You're a pretty good dog, aren't you? Ribsy wriggled with delight. Henry's friends, knowing it must be nearly dinner time, started to leave. <laughs> I'll look at your horn tomorrow if you'll get your bike out of the garage yourself, promised Scooter. Take good care of your garbage, <laughs> said Robert. Ah, keep quiet answered Henry and grinned. When the others were gone, he turned to his father and said, Say, Dad, about this garbage. What about it? asked his father. Well, we didn't have any trouble with Ribsy protecting it from the garbage man when Mom took it out, and I was wondering... Henry paused and looked at his father. Mr. Huggins smiled. Wondering what? Well, I was wondering if there wasn't something else you would rather me do for the extra 15 cents than take out the garbage. Mr. Huggins thought it over. All right, he said. I'll take out the garbage if you'll clip around the edge of the lawn after I mow it each week. It was Henry's turn to think it over. Clipping the edge of the lawn was harder than taking out the garbage. It meant crawling around on his hands and knees for about an hour. Still, as far as Henry knew now, there was no possible way either he or Ribsy could get in trouble doing it. Okay, Dad, he said. It's a deal. Okay said Mr. Huggins, but just to make sure, we'd better put Ribsy in the basement when we hear the garbage man coming. He won't mind for a little while, said Henry, giving the garbage can a good hard whack as he and his father went into the house. <laughs>